cost me about £15. Um, it's pretty cheap. It's, it looks like a really old radio but actually it's a revival edition of a Roberts radio and it was made in 1996 or 93, I'm not sure, by Roberts. Um, and it's a great FM, medium wave, long wave, is that what it is? Yeah, medium wave, long wave radio. But I think one of those is AM, I'm not sure what the name is. Anyway. Um, there's going to be a switch off of the FM frequencies for the BBC at least, I think, at some point. Now, I think that might be in 2015, but I wanted to extend the life of this radio. I don't want to go full on DAB with it because honestly I don't know how to do that. But I did want to attach a line in for it so I can use it as a portable speaker. Now, it's, um, it can run off batteries, so at the moment I've got um, some AA batteries in there that total about 8.4 volts or something like that. It had all that two days before then, when it should have been weeks, maybe more. So it does work as a radio, as, it's, as it stands, but it also has the line in. I almost hit myself in the face there. So I'll just plug that in and just demo it. I see the batteries, but I'm using just a little 9 volt battery. Now, so that was me talking as you can see, it's an awesome. And I said it was awesome, but it is. Now I'm going, to I'm going to walk you through the circuit for this, but before I, before I do, I did just want to say why I'm not connecting it to the internal amplifier and using the headphone socket on the top to put the line in through. I don't want to damage the radio, I want to keep it as it is, um, because I might want to just take it all out and give it to someone or sell it maybe in the future. I just don't want to damage it at all, so I'm connecting to the power on this, so on the DC input jack here. Uh, and I'm connected to the speaker, but I wanted to use an external amplifier to do that so that I'm not using any of the internals or potentially damaging any of it. So, let me show you the, uh, the circuit that I'm using. Right, so this is the, the circuit that mixes the stereo input from the MP3 player into a mono output so that I can put that into the, uh, the speaker. Because it's only a single speaker radio, you need to sum the radio, the sum the, the inputs, um, and the reason you do that is so that uh, the MP3 player doesn't believe that the two wires have been shorted, and also it means that the the voltage spikes will be lessened essentially. Um, now there are some other circuits available. Some people use capacitors as well as resistors, but I'm just doing the simplest method possible. I haven't used 10k resistors, I've used 1k, it's only because I don't have them lying around to use. Um, so in your cable, let me see if I've got one. So I've got one of these small stereo cables here, and uh, as you can see the end, I've just stripped off some of the wire, and around the outside there's a, there's a red wire and a white wire, and around the outside is some shielding. That's actually the ground connection which connects to, um, to this bit here. So this stuff here is the, the ground and then you have, I'm not sure which one's left or right actually, the red or the white, but one of these. So you need to connect the shielding to the ground. So that's the, uh, the stuff around the outside. And the left and right, I just chose. I mean, I don't know which one. It doesn't matter if you're really summing them anyway because it's all going to come out of one speaker. You're essentially mixing the two signals together. Uh, and then put that all into the LM386 mini amplifier. Now you can build a circuit yourself or you can just use one of these. So this is what the LM386 looks like. Um, you can pick them up on eBay pretty cheaply for about £3 I think. Um, I think mine's slightly more expensive. Uh, this is it in situ. Let me just focus on that for you. 
So there it is. I've got a bo I've got a bit of um, strip board on the front of it so that I can put the cables in, and uh, it also has pin strip here, so that's what's pulling it out. Here's my um, my battery that I've got. So it's just a big bunch of AA batteries. The reason I've done that and not used a nine volt battery is because nine volt batteries don't have a lot of uh, current stored in them. So uh, these are around 2,000 milliamp hour batteries. So it's going to give me 2,000 milliamp hours of 8.4 volts. It's not 8.4. How much is that? They're 1.2 each. So that's eight, six. Well, it's nine point six. Is that right? I don't know. I can't do math. Someone else can figure that out. Um, so it's automatically powered using this, but it also powers the radio at the same time. Now, there are some issues with that, uh, very important ones that need to be addressed. Uh, with the amplifier being connected directly to the speakers, when you use the radio, it creates sort of a feedback, so it starts coming back through uh, into the amplifier, because these cables are getting signal here. Um, so unfortunately, I need to create a switch so that I can turn this on and off. I don't have a switch at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. So for the circuit, you'll have your audio in coming here, and this is the mono going into the amplifier. Now this is the LM386. Now, let's just imagine that as a box. And then you've got the signal coming out. Now you have VCC here, so that's your your voltage that's going out to the battery, and you have a ground here, and that goes up to the battery as well. And uh, here you have the signal in, and you also have the signals ground. I can't draw on here. The signals ground here, so that goes to that. So it's pretty simple. It's a it's a nice little amplifier and it's very cheap, so I'd advise picking one up. So with the lack of a switch, it means that I do get some feedback coming through because the amplifier is always on, so there's always going to be something going on. Um, so as soon as that's switched off, then the radio will work perfectly normally. It seems to just build up. I'm not exactly sure what it is, I don't know the theory behind it. If someone can explain why it makes this high-pitched whining noise, then it would be really good. But I know that if I disconnect the amplifier, it no longer makes that noise if I'm just using the radio. Now, if I use the, the amplifier to play an MP3 and the radio at the same time, nothing happens. So I'm assuming it's because the amplifier is powered and it's not receiving signal from one end, but there's power coming through the other end. Um, perhaps it's, there's no reverse voltage detection, possibly. Not detection, prevention. Uh, I'm not sure. But the circuit's really cheap. It's about, I don't know, in total, it probably cost me about five pounds to convert it to, to give it a, a line in. So, uh, it'd be great if you guys could comment, let me know if I've made a mistake, because I'm pretty sure I have, or if there's anything dangerous I'm doing, because the last thing I want to do is damage the radio. Uh, so, please leave a comment or share with me your ideas on how it's best achieved to add line in to, to vintage or older electronics, which didn't really have the capability before. Alright, thanks a lot guys. Bye.